Hi, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Activists shut down cities in the name of the climate, but is the public on their side? The Nobel Prizes are being announced. We have a look at where they came from and what they mean. We go to the Gaza Strip to meet people working to clean the area's beaches. And an echidna goes for a swim in an animal doing something. As top of our newsfeed, Extinction Rebellion. It's expected to be the biggest week of direct action protests by climate activists all over the world. They're demanding politicians do more to reduce the amount of carbon being spewed into the atmosphere, which is causing the world to heat up. But some people are concerned their tactic of shutting down cities may undermine the demonstrators' good intentions. Dozens of protesters were arrested in Sydney in scenes that would be repeated around the world. Is this worth, worth getting arrested for? Sure. In London, police cut a protester out of a car blocking off Victoria Embankment, while in Berlin, protesters blocked one of the city's most well-known roundabouts. It's all aimed at creating as much disruption as possible. Extinction Rebellion has called for two weeks of protests. We only need to look around us to realize that if we don't act, if you don't do something, nothing's going to change. They want to use civil disobedience to force governments to address the climate crisis. If people don't listen and hear you, you just have to shout louder. And if the risk is being arrested, so be it. If I'm not at work today, the world won't end. But if I'm not here today, the world might end. My biggest concern is not for the rich in the Western world, but for the people in the global south, where droughts may eventually lead to wars and much worse. But not everyone is happy. When the protesters planned to spray fake blood on the Treasury building in London went wrong, some on Twitter were delighted. It warms my heart to see Extinction Rebellion's attempt to paint the UK Treasury building red not succeed and fail, tweeted Marcus. And Andrea wants them to pay for the cleanup. Some on the internet are just unconvinced of the action as a whole. Extinction Rebellion's goal isn't to stop climate change, it's to stop capitalism. It's simply a socialist movement under a different name and is just as evil. Dear London workers, I'm sorry that Extinction Rebellion will be destroying your livelihoods over the next two weeks for their unsubstantiated agenda. But protesters have responded to the criticism, pointing out that they're not blocking emergency vehicles even going so far as to apologize for disruptions before they even start. We're sorry for the disruption. We're sorry that we've made you late for work. We don't want to disrupt you, your families, and your loved ones. We don't want to have to be here day after day. We're ordinary people like you, and we're scared. But Monday was only the beginning, convincing people that a little inconvenience is worth it if it helps force politicians to take action to try and keep the planet a place we can all inhabit. OK, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Two people have been charged with breaking a new Hong Kong law which bans face masks. The chief executive of Hong Kong enacted the regulation on Friday. There have been protests in the streets and people have still worn masks. Now this video of a woman making a mask out of her hair has been watched more than half a million times. The protests have been running for months. People were initially angry at a plan to allow suspected criminals to be extradited to mainland China. Now that that plan has been dropped, they want an investigation into the police's treatment of demonstrators. Hong Kong will become part of China in 2047. This is video of the actor Joaquin Phoenix at a cinema in California. He went to meet people who just watched his new movie, Joker. The film had the biggest October opening ever, taking in $93 million. I have an appointment. Your name, please, sir. God, P-I-C-A-R-D. 
And this is the new trailer for the new Amazon-backed Star Trek Picard TV series. It gives us a look at Jean-Luc, as he's referred to a couple of times, essentially gathering up a posse and riding out to win the day. One of the oldest premises out there for a show, but nevertheless, it looks like it'll be good fun. It begins streaming in January. And this was Paris over the weekend. It's 130 years since the Moulin Rouge opened. It began as a ballroom and later became a music hall where the Can Can was performed. It then rose to greater prominence in popular culture thanks to a very popular film by Baz Luhrmann. Well, it is Nobel Prize season. Three scientists have gotten the prize for medicine. Their work looks at the way the body cells react to oxygen and it helps develop treatments for conditions like cancer and anemia. So as we wait for the rest of the prizes to be announced this week, we thought we'd look at how the prizes came about in the first place. For some, they are the pinnacle of recognition. For others, they reek of Western bias and sexism. So who will win this year's awards? I should be back in school. And can serve as a testament to a life's work, as a trinket given out at the wrong time. Well, this is uh, not how I expected to wake up this morning. So how did the Nobel Prize become such an important award? Alfred Nobel, against the wishes of his family, wanted to give the largest share of his fortune to a series of prizes for people who excelled in physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, and advocating peace. So since 1901, the prizes are given to people and organizations whose work has led to great advances for mankind, as was the wish of Nobel. The Nobel Prize has been awarded 590 times to more than 900 Nobel laureates and 27 organizations. There have been multiple winners, too, such as the two-time co-winners American physicist John Bardeen and Polish scientist Marie Curie. And organizations like the International Committee of the Red Cross and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Some winners were in prison, like German pacifist and journalist Karl von Ossietzky in 1935, Burmese politician Aung San Suu Kyi in 1991, and Chinese human rights activist Liu Xiaobo in 2010. There's usually a delay between a scientific discovery and the time of receiving the award, which varies from 20 to 30 years, depending on the award category. Winners get a diploma, medal, and a cash award of over $1 million. The youngest winner is Malala Yousafzai, who was 17 when she won the Nobel Peace Prize. And American scientist Arthur Ashkin is the oldest at 96. So who are the judges? In his will, Nobel nominated Stockholm's Karolinska Institute for giving the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences for the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, and the Swedish Academy for the Prize in Literature. Strangely, he nominated a panel selected by the Parliament of neighboring Norway to give away the Peace Prize. And how do you win a Nobel? There's high-level secrecy around the awarding of the prizes, and the judges are prohibited from discussing any nominations who didn't win for 50 years. However, many winners and parliaments lobby the Nobel Committee on behalf of their favorites. But nominations do not ensure success, as Lise Meitner, who split the atom, knows. She was nominated 29 times, but never won once or India's Mahatma Gandhi, who was nominated five times but never won the award. The Nobel Committee later admitted that was the greatest omission in our 106-year history. The Peace Prize is the most political one. When the then U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger was awarded the prize in 1973, two committee members resigned in protest as Kissinger famously ordered a bombing raid in Vietnam while negotiating a ceasefire. And recently, the Nobel Committee came under fire for not rescinding Su Chi's Nobel after her failure to stop the genocide of Rohingya Muslims by Myanmar's military. Okay, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Monday. Well, Microsoft says an Iranian hacking group has attempted to infiltrate a US presidential campaign. The tech giant didn't specify which campaign was attacked. The group, which Microsoft calls Phosphorus, attempted to get email addresses of people working for a campaign. It's just an example of how threats to the US elections will be coming from many parts of the world. 
Prince Harry of Britain is suing two British newspapers, The Sun and The Daily Mirror, for allegedly hacking his phone and listening to his voicemail messages. It comes after his wife, the Duchess of Sussex, announced that she was suing the Mail on Sunday for publishing a letter that she wrote to her father. Last month was the hottest September ever recorded, continuing the Earth's record of increasing global temperatures caused by our burning of fossil fuels, which release carbon into the atmosphere. This has been the hottest summer period ever, setting 2019 on course to be the warmest year ever recorded. And following the success of the excellent Chernobyl TV series, the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster is now a tourist attraction and the highly radioactive Reactor 4 control room is open for your visiting, Instagram snapping, cancer-inducing pleasure as long as you wear protective equipment. Well, to Gaza now where people have been volunteering to make their small strip of land more beautiful. محمد أبو جيلة عمره 22 سنة أحد القائمين على هذا النشاط وفي نفس الوقت أنا متطوع مع المتطوعين الموجودين هنا أيو بيتش كلين أب هي حملة دولية لتنظيف شواطئ البحار والمحيطات على مستوى العالم نحن اليوم في غزة بنعملها باسم بحرنا أحلى أطلقنا هذا الاسم عليها لأنه نحن حابين نشوف بحرنا أحلى بحر في العالم اليوم نحن لما بنعمل هيك حملة بنعملها على أساس نعزز قيمة داخل الشباب المتطوعين اللي معنا احنا اعلنا في التسجيل كنا بدنا 250 متطوع وصلنا اكثر من 350 طلب في غضون اقل من اسبوع فهذا شيء كثير ببسطنا لانه قيمه التطوع عاليه ومعزز عند الناس كثير عندنا يعني الحمد لله لما بس قلنا بدنا نعمل حمله لقينا في استجابه كبير من المجتمع المحلي ومن الشباب نفسهم ومن الهيئات المحليه المسؤوله عن هيك شيء قدرنا نجمع اكثر من 250 متطوع ومتطوعه في هذا اليوم لتنظيف شط بحر بيت لاهيه احنا كجزء من العالم كناس عندنا بحر بنهتم بنظافه البيئه وبنظافه بحرنا شاركنا بهاي الحمله قدر الامكان حاولنا انه ننظف البحر ليطلع بصوره اجمل كلفت منا للحفاظ على شواطئ غزه تكون اجمل غزه بحاجه لهيك مبادرات عشان نثبت للعالم اول شيء انه الشباب قادر يغير قادر يعني يكون له دور في المجتمع وبرضه عشان نحن نثبت للناس انه غزه مش دائما حرب ودمار غزه فيها اشياء حلوه فيها مناطق حلوه والبحر طبعا انتم عارفين انه هذا الشيء المتنفس الوحيد لسكان قطاع غزه نظفنا مساحه كيلو متر على بحر غزه وطلعنا كميه قمامه كبيره كبيره نبين للناس انه احنا في كيلو واحد طلع قديش سبنا فما لك لو نظفنا كل بحر غزه وساهمنا مع البلديه شكرا لرجال البلديه اللي انه اجوا ساعدونا فعن جد انا بشكر كل شاب اليوم شارك في هذه المبادره نفسي حملتنا هاي يعني تمد اكثر بدل ما احنا بنشتغل اليوم بس في بيت لاهيه نشتغل على شط غزه ونشتغل على شط خان يونس ونشتغل على شط دير البلع ونشتغل على شط رفح كمان نشتغل جوا المحافظات وان في اماكن عن جد محتاجه تنظيف محتاجه ترتيب محتاجه اكثر اشياء احنا ان شاء الله حنكون موجودين فيها احنا بحاجه لكثير مبادرات من اجل التغيير في هذا المجتمع اللي بحاجه لتغيير كبير بطلب من كل شاب عنده مبادره عنده حمله يطلقها الشباب جاهزين وكمان مؤسسات المجتمع المدني جاهزه لانه هيك تبادر مع الشباب اللي عندهم روح المبادره الصحيحه المبادره اللي بتخدم المجتمع بشكل صحيح And last up today, an animal doing something, and this one is taking a swim. This is an echidna, also known as a spiny anteater, taking to the water on Kangaroo Island in South Australia. Now, this thing, which looks to me like a beefed up hedgehog, is also in a very special club with the platypus. They're both egg-laying mammals, if you didn't know. Now, researchers from the University of Adelaide are trying to get more information about these secretive little things and have developed a smartphone app which will allow people who spot them to record their location and what they're doing, thereby helping scientists understand a little bit more about them.
will do you from the newsfeed team. Do reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24 seven on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel and you can follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe, and add, and I will see you again tomorrow.